It's one of the more interesting stories I've come across since doing my channel. We've all heard stories about how record labels and some bands were very dismissive of technology with the advent of the internet and Napster. This technology would disrupt and destroy the traditional sales models that record labels had at the time. But today I want to talk about the band Megadeth and how they embraced technology to the point that it heavily worked in their favor and in doing so they made internet history. Stay tuned for the full story. The year was 1994 and heavy metal band Megadeth was coming off the success of their biggest record of their career with 1992's Countdown to Extinction. The album peaked at number 2 on the album charts and went double platinum, led in part by the radio-friendly singles Symphony of Destruction and Sweating Bullets. The touring cycle behind the record though was a little bumpy as Megadeth frontman Dave Mustaine dealt with substance abuse issues and then the band was fired from their tour with Aerosmith. I've done a whole video on that ill-fated tour, the link is down below. The band would then turn their attention to releasing their follow-up to Countdown to Extinction in 1994. Rob and Sloan Bechtel, who worked with the marketing group at Megadeth's label Capitol Records, published a pretty detailed article about her time at the label. She detailed how she came up with an out-of-the-box idea to promote Megadeth's new album at the time, and Capitol Records initially wanted to promote the record using the tried and true formula that asked the simple questions. Who will shoot the album cover? How many radio stations will play the single? How many posters should be printed for the record stores? But with the advent of the internet, Robin had an idea that this new technology could be instrumental in promoting the album and the label's other artists. But Megadeth wasn't the first band she used technology and computers to promote. Prior to working on the marketing plan for Megadeth's new album, she was tasked with working on the marketing for two other artists Capitol Records was putting out albums for. Those would be Frank Sinatra and Bonnie Ray. It would be a co-worker of hers that introduced her to the Macromedia Director software, which was an authoring tool that could be used to make simple yet effective video games. She quickly created a video game for Frank Sinatra's new album that quickly won over the people at Capitol Records. It wasn't too long after this, she worked on the marketing plan for Beastie Boys record Ill Communication, and she came up with the idea of releasing a screensaver of the band on various gaming and software forums and on floppy disk. The screensaver proved to be a huge hit, but during this time she also learned about something else known as the World Wide Web. It just so happened to coincide with her being assigned to work on the marketing team at Capitol Records for the new Megadeth album. As she sat in the meeting to discuss the promotion for the record, the same old tired questions were being asked that she'd previously heard. It wasn't long after that she wrote a proposal for what she envisioned would be a website to promote the album. In her mind, the website could serve as, and I quote, a virtual cyber town in cyberspace. The cyber town would be a fictional place named Megadeth, which was located in the state of Arizona, where the band lived and recorded their latest album at the time. Her boss, Lou Mann, who was the senior vice president of the label, ended up giving her $30,000 to pursue the idea. And she would admit on her Medium.com article, he had no idea what it was for, and I can guarantee you, neither did I. Funny enough, Robin would enlist two co-workers, a copywriter and a graphics artist to provide the content for the website. She would reveal they did not know what the internet was either. And the inspiration for the website would be the Roadside America Tourist Guide and a postcard her coworker found from Arizona. The website would consist of the following features. News about the band, which was called Megabyte News, music and video clips from their upcoming album, and a digital postcard which you could send via email. It would prove to be one of the first instances on the internet where you could email video clips along with a customizable greeting card to other people. There was also a chat room where you could meet other Megadeth fans. The real mission of the website was to make it seem like a town or a vacation for fans to meet and mingle. The website would end up being a phenomenal success, bringing over 3 million visitors by 1995, and it even caught the attention of some other hugely successful and powerful people, including Starbucks CEO Howard Schultz. Schultz had requested a meeting with Capitol Records' marketing team to know how they utilized the internet to market their product. And following that meeting with Starbucks, Robin's salary was doubled, and Starbucks soon launched their own website. Once the album cycle was done for Megadeth, Capitol Records wanted to shut down the site, but there was such a devoted following, they would keep it up. So what did the members of Megadeth think about this whole thing? Well, the members of Megadeth, more specifically bassist David Ellison and frontman Dave Mustaine, were both fans of computers to begin with, as they had already purchased them as early as 1990. Megadeth leader Dave Mustaine would look back at how important the site was revealing in an interview, 
I think the internet is great for certain reasons. If you remember back, we were the first band to have a website. We won just about every single award there was in the very beginning, so we're not against the internet at all. Meanwhile, bassist David Ellefson credited the website with boosting the band's popularity and would recall discussions with management back in 1994 saying, very clearly I remember having discussions with management, the band, and Capital who were sitting there. What is the internet? What do you do? What is the goal? Everybody was like, it's the wild, wild west, but I think we should go for it. As a band, we were very much into it, he'd say. The website also had some other unintended impacts, including peaking interest in computers and the internet. Robin would note in her article that she got countless messages from people thanking her for getting them interested in both computers and the World Wide Web. In addition to that, it would also prove to be social media in its infancy. Not only did the website give fans a chance to talk with each other, it also created long-lasting relationships. According to Robin, some fans met, dated, and got married, while another fan unfortunately got the clap. In addition to all the fan mingling, it also gave them a chance to chat with their favorite band. When he, referring to Dave Mustaine, first ventured into the site's chat room, none of the fans believed he was who he said he was. Once they realized it was him, they wouldn't leave him alone. And the website would prove to be so successful that Capitol Records soon created interactive sites for their other artists, including the Beatles and Duran Duran. So that does it for today's video, guys. Thanks for watching. Be sure to like button and subscribe. And we'll see you again tomorrow on Rock and Roll True Stories. Take care.